Alright fellas, this is a Master 911 from Trevor Pierce. He's given it kind of a special name. Uh, I can't say that on a family channel, but anyway, uh, it is a challenge lock, one of his first. And we have a key that's mummified and taped to the side. I think we can probably pick around. I won't even have to take it off until it's time to pick this, or time to open up the lock and show you guys the key, hopefully. So let's see if we can figure out what Trevor's got here for us. I think with a name like that, you can be sure it's probably nasty. And you might even use that word a couple of times during the picking. All right, let's see what we got here. I think we can fit a... Nope. 50-50. Always get it wrong. Okay, we got a pretty floppy core, so you can be sure there are some... some nasty pins in there. All right, let me... grab... I'm going to grab this, this is a Sparrows, one of the Euro tip, called a hybrid pick. And I think that will get us there. If not, we're going to go to the Magic pick. And I don't like to pull that out unless I have to. All right, light tension, it is a challenge lock. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so maybe you guys will be able to see some more. And that key is a little bit in the way of my finger, but I think we can live with it. Light tension, and let's find a binder. Very light tension. And I got nothing here. I feel like my pick is getting a little bit hung up. Okay, I got a little bit of a fault set. That was pin 2. And it didn't take a lot of pressure at all on that pick to set that guy. Looking for feedback? All right, I am going to go with a thinner pick. I'm going to pull out the magic pick. Where'd you go? You little devil, I keep him hidden. Here we go, the 15,000th DeForest. It's a nice wide keyway. Just curves a little bit right there at the very end. And I think a 15 will get around that. This was not the lock I was thinking of when I had this pick made, but it comes in handy. There we go, that was pin one. Got a click off of him. I'm on pin three, get a counter rotation, I got a click off of him. If that was a spool with counter rotation like that, that was a very short spool. Okay, I'm on Six, I am getting a little bit of counter rotation. I think you might be able to see it there. And I got a click off of him. Okay, that was two, and I just barely touched him. Got the fault set back. I'm on pin one, a little counter rotation. And I think we got him. Either that or I'm picking my tension wrench again. I do that way too often. Okay, I heard a click, I heard something fall. Pin three. Okay, I got a click. Okay, that was pin two again. He'd fallen. Oh, there we go. How easy was that? I did not expect that, guys. <laughs> I thought we had a couple of pins left. All right, well, we got, I think we got an open. There we go. It's not spring loaded on the shackle. Um, let me zoom out here. I hate to use a knife because those razor blades lately just haven't been working for me. So... I was hoping maybe that would just slide off of there. Look at that. That is not much of a bidding on that thing, is it? Not much at all. I would have expected something quite a bit more radical. All right, let's see what we got. It is, I'm sure it's like a 13.4 millimeter. Here we go, that looks 764th maybe. Yes. It pays to keep every single one of these on the workbench. 
Okay, nothing unusual up inside of there. Looks like a standard core. I don't see any external pins that he's welded on the side of it or anything. So this is a good thing. Um, got a key, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. If we the pinning tray, though, let me set this reverently. This guy, I'm going to set him reverently back up there where he belongs. Okay. can we do here? How about this guy? That's going to work. I am going to turn it just a little bit differently so nothing falls out of there. And I think that's what we want. Whoa. The last one just fell. I pinched that. I pulled it a little bit too soon and that last one fell out. It Set that down right there. It is a Looks like a spool, so that would be number one. We'll worry about him later. Let's first grab these guys. I'm seeing some threading on here already. Looks like, I'm trying to see this through the camera, probably quit doing that. One, three, and five are all threaded. By the way, it was a five pin lock, or five pin key, and six pin lock. And that's because the tip of that key rides up against that sixth one, so it does work. All right, let's dump these. Looks like a homemade serrated, homemade serrated, mm, homemade serrated, I'm guessing that is. A little groove down the center of that guy. It's kind of a spool key pin, I guess. That was number six. He's a standard. And then number five is hung up in there. He is. Again, one of these little, all these have these little grooves. I hesitate to call them serrations, but they're like spool key pins. And I'm not sure that they would come into play, quite honestly, even with threaded like this. So let's double check this again. Yeah, one, three, and five. And I've already popped that first one out. So let's see if we can not do any more damage. Let me grab that guy just in case he's got any more energy stored. I got to replace that spring. I'm going to turn this follower over so we don't get any surprises. All right, I'm seeing some threads in that first chamber. Let me get these things lined up. And the second chamber, he, there's barely any spring pressure on that guy. Probably explains why I didn't feel him get set. And he is a commercial serrated. Next guy has good spring tension, but again, he barely popped up there. And he is a... Standard. Okay, next one is a spool. Had good spring tension on him. You heard him hit that. Had good spring tension on that guy too. Another spool. And the last one is another spool. So nothing too exotic in the top like I would have thought. Again, uh, a lot of times you can tell by looking at the top of these cores what's been threaded. So we got some different threading going on here. Sometimes it's you can look down in there and let me dump those springs out. You can look in there and see them, but sometimes it's just easier to look from the top. And you can see one, two, and it looked like three and four, I believe. One, no, one through five actually are all threaded. All right. So, what can I say about this lock? Um, it has some tricky, a tricky spring in it, that I can say, and in fact, there he is right there. He's been cut down a little bit, to, just so that pin barely gives any tension. That kind of helped me, because I think I picked him probably with the shaft. So what would I do to this 911? I probably, you have everything set up here for serration pins, everything. The, the core has got serrations, the Bible has serrations. I think there should be some serrations in there. I probably would have gone with some more serrated pins in the top to grab very firmly up into those uh, cuts that you've gone to the trouble to put into the Bible and into the core. Then I think this would be a very, very challenging lock. So what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to take 
all of your spools and your upper pins out. I'm going to replace them with serrated, uh, commercial serrated and uh, serrated spools. These guys are okay. I'm just going to go and leave those. Nothing wrong with those. They might even grab up a little bit inside of the core. Who knows? All right. Great effort, Trevor. Appreciate it. If anybody would like to have this lock, you guys know what to do. Uh, go to the website, hit that button, it says enter contest, and you, you pay for shipping guys, and I will send this anywhere on the planet Earth. I'm going to list, leave it up for 48 hours and we'll let the computer decide who wins. Good luck guys. Stay safe, stay legal.